they get quite a bit bigger than this. And what they're doing is they're waiting for ants. Okay, I call them ant lions. So they call them one of the small five. So an ant walks along, creeps along, creeps along, oops, falls into the side here. What happens is as he's coming into the side, you can actually see, if you look closely, there's something throwing sand up at him. Hard to see. Yeah. yeah. Throwing sand. Yeah. So that little thing throws sand up to hit the ant. So the ant carries on and falls down. And then what it does, it's got these two big jaws on it. Whoosh, latches onto it and then injects it with an enzyme. And it fills that up with the enzyme, waits, waits for a while while it's holding onto it underground. And then slopes that all out again. Yeah. But the interesting thing about this is that it metamorphizes into something beautiful. It's an ugly looking little bug now, but it metamorphizes into something that looks like a dragonfly or a lace wing. Beautiful, delicate thing that flies around with no, no teeth whatsoever. Quite an interesting cycle. Okay. Exactly what an elephant did. You're 100% yeah. right. Didn't dig it up, but it. it, it remember it's what? Kind of loose. It? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So remember what we saw with the foot, yeah. where the elephant kicks the foot. Mm -hmm. So it grabs this with the trunk, and it kicks the foot, and does the roots. And then these roots are full of soil. So you see the elephant. He hits it back and forward, makes sure all the sand's off, and then he eats it. For some reason, he didn't like this piece, so he threw it back down. <laughs> Uh, other kinds of dung is absolutely fine. Herbivores, or, do you want to touch? No. <laughs> uh, absolutely fine. But any predator, anything that eats meat, bacteria, there's too much bacteria and it's actually harmful to human health. So we don't touch that. This is not so much meat in here, uh, it's all insects. So this whole thing is full of insects. So I'd hazard a guess and say mongoose. Uh, it's quite different, difficult to tell all the different types of mongoose species. But I would say mongoose. If it had a lot more hair in it and uh, it was a little bit more meat based, you would uh, say it was a jackal. The jackal looks very similar like this as well. With a jackal, generally they tend to do it like on top of the grass, or on a little bit of a high area, so that everyone else knows that this is my spot. But I'd hazard a guess they pretend a mongoose of some, some sort? Yeah. Yeah? Definitely one of the mongoose. Okay, so white tail. Everybody's coming here. Uh, lions, all cheetahs, leopards, hyenas, and all other antelope species. They are all of them tend to get water here. In this very fresh spot. Yeah, some very very bare teeth. But warthogs seem to. I'm not even sure why, but they have a lot flatter teeth than most of the other animals out here. All the other other animals have this have this ridge that comes up the side, and then they kind of chew sideways on their things. Whereas warthogs usually have flat teeth. Custom rule check. But then it's giving me lots of food, yeah? So if you want to come around and have a look at that. So we talked a little bit about this in both vehicles various times along the trip, but it's actually just nice to see it. Wow. That's everything they eat just turns to dust. It's quite amazing. <laughs> so uh, the only thing shouldn't really touch just is tiny little black hairs I can see inside here. Black hairs, maybe they could have come from a topi 
or something like that. You can generally tell what the hyena's been eating by looking at the different hairs. And although the hyena's gut is amazing, bones, everything gets taken and digested and turned into this powder, uh, the only thing it doesn't do is hair. Keratin, it cannot digest keratin in the hair. Interesting, eh? <laughs> These are around, aren't they? Mm -hmm. This one's oval shaped. So oval shaped, and if you dug all this stuff out, you'll probably find not too much there. So it's a fresh hole, um, a keyhole shape. So this is probably a scorpion. Mm -hmm. So the scorpion, if you think about the design of a scorpion, it's nice and flat. Mm -hmm. So it goes in here and comes out at night. And I've actually got a UV light. I've been looking for every evening. I've been looking for one to find and show you guys, but I haven't found one yet. Um, yeah, and this is the ground scorpion. There's a few different types here. Uh, I'm not actually sure which type this is. But all the keyhole shaped holes or, or the oval shaped holes you see on the ground, mostly scorpions. Mm. If you really want to go to the bathroom apart from where you're sitting, <laughs> these birds are impossible to see on the ground. Unless you get right, right up to them, they're impossible to see. And you can see you just have to go on the side so he doesn't actually have to move a muscle, whatever. He just get, moves his bum a little bit this way, dev get, it's like a clock. This is a Tom gazelle. <laughs> no. no, it's too big. No, it is, uh, this is huge. Okay, so this is the eland. So this is the biggest, uh, the biggest antelope uh, that we have. See the spiral horns? This is probably a big, big uh, adult male, and it's quite a nice. You, you don't often get to see the, the skull as intact as, as you do like this. Long nasal cavities. You can see clearly now. But you can see clearly I'll come past the river. Those nasal uh, Yeah, honey so made through that. You see it? Mm -hmm. That honeycomb. Oh, yeah. That's what I was trying to explain a little bit earlier. All that honeycomb going through. And it's actually a movable unit. There we go. It's a big septum, huh? Look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all that is a sensory organ. But it goes way back, way back. It's much, much bigger than this. Um, and especially the bigger the animal gets, the more of these, the more dilated these are as well. So therefore, it, it acts, acts as a cooling device. Interesting to see that, eh? Very, very interesting. And look at how the, the, the horns are formed. The horns are not uh, horns. So it's not like antlers that you'd get on a deer. These are, are bone. So they're part of the skull. Oh. Yeah, so it's not like every year they come off. This is uh, fused with the skull, and it's just got a keratin layer which goes around it. Which the keratin layer, we've seen that many, many times with a lot of other animals. And what's taking care of this are the horn moths. Remember we talked about mm -hmm. those moths yep. on, the, on the end? The horn moth caused this. this are there is any mammals that have antlers? No. no. Well, well, yeah, I mean, not to get no, no, not to get no. But look at this animal. What did you say its best senses? Sight and smell. So oh, smell yeah. we've covered, that's exactly mm -hmm. right. But look at the eye socket. Massive eye socket. <laughs> so Elon to have amazing, amazing vision. And that's why they're, they're neurotic as well. That's why it's really hard to get close to Eland unless they're very accustomed to vehicles. And this is a huge, huge eye for, for the size of the skull. So, what, 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 so was there something here? So those are veins. So those are blood vessels and veins that come through the top of the head. Hmm. So there just needs to be a little spot for them. You see, they're, they're all over yep. uh, where blood can pass through. Interesting. Imitate, I am a little insect walking along. And you can feel this at the moment. You can also feel all our footsteps. Oh. <laughs> that was great. That was great. <laughs> Uh, no, antlion, buffalo weaver, and, and this, the rhino beetle. So three of the big five. You can see it's 
Open it a bit, I don't want to break it. That's a very cool It's alive? No. How is it Try. The one with this ball? I'll show you now. So, Triceratops himself. Yeah. Oh. Tantala, the rhino beetle. Oh yeah. So this is small, he gets quite a bit bigger than this. But you can see he's got the horn. Oh. <laughs> can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my oh. goodness. Yeah, it's, a, like it's a proper rhino horn on the end yeah. of that. <laughs> These are not easy to find, eh? They're really not easy to find. Huh. That's very, very, very cool. You put you that, see, put you, that in your pocket and take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> you can see he looks a bit like a triceratops. He's got all these bumps yeah. on the top. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really nice to see that. Yeah, what a beautiful thing. They, they get pretty big when they, they, when they grow up. They get yeah, pretty big, yeah. Yeah, this big. You want to try to get a photo? Yeah. <coughs> it's quite light. It blows away in the wind. These eggs were, were, were eggs. They, you would have been able to, like, ply, they would have been pliable, not like a chicken's egg. So you would have been able to move them around, which tells you what. What is soft eggs? Lizard. Sort of. Lizard, sort of. They are close. A reptilian. Tortoise. Tortoise. Exactly. Tortoise. Yes. It's tortoise. So, so this would have been a tortoise's uh, e tortoise eggs. They would have laid it in here mm -hmm. in the wet season. And then some animal, I don't know what animal, it could have oh, been a honey like badger. Mark. This looks like a honey badger, the way it digs. Mm -hmm. It could be a honey badger that dug it up and, and ate it. Hmm, I'm right, tortoise eggs, right? Mm -hmm. yeah,